everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. Long time no see. Hope everybody's been having a wonderful holiday season with their friends and family. Today, we're going to talk all about copepods. What are they? Where do they come from? Are they beneficial? And much, much more. So let's start with the basics. What is a copepod? By definition, these tiny zooplankton crustaceans are like the cows of the sea eating phytoplankton and converting the sun's energy into food for higher trophic levels in the food web. Copepods are some of the most abundant animals on the planet. Copepods can be found in nearly every freshwater and saltwater habitat. What's even crazier is just copepods can be found at surface level down to some of the deepest parts of the ocean swimming around. Now, how do you know you're looking at a copepod or know if they're in your tank? So copepods are extremely tiny, Pouring a bottle of pods into your saltwater tank looks like just tiny little dust particles floating around in the air. At max, they're about two millimeters long. Yes, I said millimeters. They have a teardrop-shaped body and an antenna on its head. Like many crustaceans, they do have an exoskeleton that is almost see-through. I can promise you they are in your tank even if you have not seen them. They can hide deep in the live rock crevices if you're up late at night and the lights have been out for a while, go up to the corner of one of your tanks and shine a flashlight in the back, and I bet you'll see all kinds of creatures, one being a copepod, running or jumping across to hide. Some of them will usually mimic like a shrimp running away from a predator, how they bounce across, flapping their tail. That's usually how copepods will get around. So how did they get into my tank? So copepods are like any other hitchhiker. They're in the live rock you get from the store, Whenever you add it to your tank, they can also be on coral frags. Even some of the water, if it goes into your tank from an LFS, it can have them in there. I mean, they are tiny, tiny little guys, and there's a big abundance of them in the water. You can also add them directly into the tank. So are they good or are they bad for my aquarium? 99% of the time, copepods are great for your aquarium. The 1% deals with some rare variations that you shouldn't really run into in this hobby. So why are they good? Well, they're at the bottom of nearly every food chain, which is what you want. So they're going to feed on things like microalgae, detritus, fish waste, and in turn, they're going to be food for your corals that are filter feeding and food for your smaller fish like dragonets or even wrasse. Copepods are literally live foods for your corals and fish to eat throughout the day. So when we're building these saltwater tanks and we're trying to recreate that ocean environment for the fish and corals, you can see how having a food source like copepods can be so beneficial for your tank. Flakes, pellets, and frozen foods are great, but you're talking about a live food source that your fish can chase after and your corals can feed on. You just can't beat that. Now, how can I keep a population of copepods in my tank abundant? Because you can dwindle their population down in the aquarium. Corals in the tank are gonna be filter feeding constantly. Fish are gonna track them down. Even inverts will eat them. This is all natural, but with someone that has like a mandarin goby or a leopard wrasse in their tank, you'll want to make sure those always have plenty of copepods to eat because a lot of times they'll only eat those live foods and won't eat what you're feeding your other fish. The simplest trick is adding bottles of pods into the tank. There's a ton of different variations and sizes of pods you can get. One of my favorites that were carried in the store were tigger pods from Reef Nutrition. Algae Barn also has a really good selection of pods that they raise in-house. There's Apex Pods, Arctic Pods. I think Algae Barn has a Galaxy Bottle that has multiple variations in one. You're really getting the same live food that's good for your corals and fish, no matter what you choose. And one thing, whenever you are buying these bottles of pods, I always try to remind people that whenever you're adding them, you still want to acclimate them and at the very least get the temperature the same as your tank because most are going to be in refrigerators, they're going to be cold. So if you just dump those straight into a warmer tank, it can cause them to perish. So be careful. The next question you want to ask yourself is how can I get copepods to reproduce so that I'm not having to add bottles of pods every month? You want to get some macroalgae. Now, if you have a refugium, this is a perfect scenario because you can put that macroalgae into the refugium, let it grow, and then pour those bottle of pods into the algae, which will lead the copepods to get up in there, stay safe. They won't be getting eaten, 
and then they'll have plenty to eat, leading to them reproducing. Now, what if you don't have a refugium? Maybe you just have hanging on the back filters. Don't fret. I used to do macroalgae in my tank. I would put it behind the rocks on either of the corners and then pour my pods into the colony of that algae. Now, is it as good as a refugium? Obviously not, because your fish can go over there and eat the pods up because all the source of the pods are right there for them. And your tang sometimes can really have a liking for that algae, but it is a great workaround. There are also some tools I've seen online that you can mimic, kind of like a copepod hotel. Worth a shot, but I'd go macroalgae every time just to mimic close as you can to that ocean environment for them. Now, whenever you're choosing macroalgae, there's a ton of them you can choose from too. They all really are doing the same thing. You know, a lot of times people are just choosing by looks in case they're going to have that algae in their tank. So Chato is definitely the most popular green stringy like that sticks together. You also have sea lettuce is a really cool one. One of my favorites is that bright red pom-pom algae. That stuff looks really cool under LED lights. But at the end of the day, you're just giving them a place to house up, eat, and reproduce. Now you can also feed your copepods phytoplankton too. So a lot of stores will sell a combo pack that you can buy. It's in this big green bottle that you can put in there. Dosing both of those in the aquarium really accomplishes a balanced diet for your reef inhabitants. Because at that point, they're at the bottom of the food chain, and then you're also giving them food just to be better for what your corals and your fish are eating. You just can't beat that. So now you know what copepods are, how they got into your tank, are they good or bad, how to add more, and also how to help with reproduction as well as feeding them. One final fun fact to end the video, a copepod can eat up to 373,000 phytoplankton in one day. Thank you all for checking out this new episode of All About. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends and family about us. Hope everyone has a great holiday season. Stay safe. Be kind, and I'll see y'all later.